Okay. All right. So I'll go ahead and uh, get us started. So thank you everyone for joining us for Strawby's very first class. So you know, with me is James Chen and Eric Toshinson will also be joining us in future, uh, future planars. He'll be kind of chiming in and out of a few planars, but just uh, for us, it's just us two this round. So you get to play with uh, James Chen and get to know him as well. Uh, James, can you actually introduce yourself just so everyone knows more about you? Okay, perfect. Sorry, I, I muted myself. So uh, my name is James Chen. I'm happy to be with you guys. Uh, I started with Strawbies back in 2013, 2014. So we had lots of fun building projects at that time. And I helped create some projects in Asia, especially, especially in Taiwan, as well as uh, starting the Singapore area, Thailand and China. And what I really focused on is open ended building questions and how to create uh, the framework for kids to really step outside of that box and so we'll be talking a little bit about that today as well and super happy to be here with Lindsay because she's done an extraordinary job guiding strawberry education and being the leader in how we can help facilitate creative creativity as well as open-ended building sessions so that is me and I will go ahead and lower some of this music Sorry about that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. All right, thanks, James. So, yeah, so I just wanna do a brief overview of uh, what we're gonna be doing today. So what became uh, really interesting about this topic is we have a very popular lesson plan called the City Building Lesson Plan, which I will share in the chat. So any, any websites or links that I might mention, I'll also make sure to always copy and paste in the chat. So that way you can always follow along and you know, review because we may not be able to show everything. And uh, when James and I were originally planning for this webinar, we actually realized really quickly that we couldn't do this in one single session. So that's why we broke it up into four separate planars that makes one class as a whole. So we will, if there is one week that you cannot attend, which is every Wednesday, at this time in the whole month of August. So there's four planar sessions in total. If you cannot attend um, live with us, you can also view the recording after. So we'll always record and post online in the Strawbies Educators Facebook group, as well as the, profession, the Strawbies Professional Learning YouTube channel. So, you know, don't worry. What we want, but what we really wanna do is really get to see some of the projects. So hopefully you can always tune inside the Zoom, but you are also welcome to always email me, lindsay at strawbies.com if you want to share some photo documentation or pictures. And also at the very end of each planar, we will also always have an opportunity to share. So we do have one planar um, on week three that we're going to be focusing on sharing our projects on our cities, um, how we've been developing them. But we also are going to always offer at the end of any planar, no matter what week it is, to, to actually turn on your video. So you have the ability to turn on your video and show your project. But of course, that is a completely optional thing. And you know, sharing uh, photos in the chat or sending us links or sending it again at my email, lindsay at strawbiz.com is no problem. So we try to you know, work with everyone's different technical limitations as well as any ideas or if you feel ready to present or maybe just wanna just create in the background, no problem. So, uh, James, why don't you go ahead and share the, the slides? So we have like a short presentation that we'll show. So we're going to be switching between a presentation of uh, just kind of getting you to understand what the sustainable development goals with the city building project is. So together we're going to be building a city. So you're going to be building a city um, and we're going to be doing a lot of design today and learning how to build some very basic simple buildings with Strawbies. And of course, a lot of the stuff that we can create, you can actually make replicas of and make modular buildings of. So you can actually build a hundred of these buildings and quickly take over your whole living room, your school classroom, if you're back to school, or even, uh, even a room. You, you can definitely play along with uh, whatever uh, materials you also have in your space. So we're primarily using strawbies, but feel free to use paper, strawbies, or cardboard and strawbies. So the idea is to really try to 
always look around your environment for the materials you have. But we'll be primarily using strawbies as like kind of the base structure. So James, go ahead and uh, start the Google Slides. Awesome, perfect. So can you guys see the slides right now? Uh, let me know if you can see them. Are they playing right now? Let me try again. Okay, let's try again. Okay. Okay, can you guys see them? Yes or no? Let me know right now if you guys can see the slides. It's kind of strange. Okay, yes, no. Okay, Lindsay, can you see the slides? Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, awesome. So uh, we're just going to be going over a quick outline today. We're just going to be talking about the intro. Uh, what are some thoughts that, what are some questions, what are some thoughts that we have while we're building this? And of course, week two is going to be more about the problem solving prototyping. And week three is going to be open build day. Then, of course, week four is going to be the most exciting where we share and reflect upon our projects together. Now, I'm really looking forward to that. Now, starting off, um, I just want to share a quick video. Now, this video I found online, and it's a good way to actually engage with children. Uh, when I was watching this, it actually raised quite a lot of good questions as to how we can start thinking about sustainability and what does it mean to build uh, with that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this video first and afterwards we'll have a quick discussion and we'll write down some ideas together and share some thoughts. Hi guys, do you have time for a few quick questions? I see you're having a lot of fun, but do you ever stop and think if what you do is sustainable? And do you know what sustainable development means? Sustainable development is to make the world a better place for everyone now without destroying the possibilities for the next generations. If you wonder if something is sustainable, you can ask yourself, can we do this over and over again forever? Sustainable development means that we need to keep three things in mind at once. Social progress, economic development, and climate and environment. First of all, we have to take care of our planet. We have many natural ecosystems that must be in balance in order for us to live here. The climate system is one of them. This system ensures that the temperature is correct and that the atmosphere emits exactly the right amount of solar energy. When we emit harmful greenhouse gases such as CO2, we clog the atmosphere. This changes the temperatures in Earth, which again affects our development. How we produce and use energy is incredibly important. Oil and coal are examples of energy we may run out of. Water, wind and sun, however, will always be here. Using the lasting sources of energy that renew themselves is good for the planet and can provide jobs for years to come. Economics. Almost everything we develop, buy and trade starts with nature. The smarter we use our natural resources and the better systems we create for a fair distribution, the more sustainable we are. One way to contribute to a more uneven distribution is to be more aware of what we buy and how it is produced. A football is a good example. It travels far before it reaches the football players. First, the materials are made. Then, they print the logo somewhere else before a third country sees it all together. One single football sees the whole world before it reaches its goal. This journey ties us together. If we are to win the battle for a sustainable future, we have to play with fair rules that applies to everyone. Social progress. We humans are part of nature, but we're also important resources for the world. Just like water, the forest, and the sun, we have minds that can create the strangest and most creative things. But for us to be the best versions of ourselves, there are certain things that must be in order, like having equal opportunities to education, safety, food, and medicine. This provides greater opportunities for us as human beings, but also for the planet. We just have to think in new ways. These three must work together. That is sustainable development. 
And there is actually a plan for this. All the countries of the United Nations have agreed on a joint plan for sustainable development. But for the plan to work, we need to cooperate and we need you to be on board. Are you with us? That was one of my favorite um, videos that I saw, and it really got me thinking about how to introduce um, this concept to kids. Because as we're thinking about building a city, there's quite a lot to think about. You can be overwhelmed if you don't take it apart. So what we want to do right now is to have step-by-step -step procedures. Now, here are the steps that we have completed. Uh, we have put together for you guys and of course the first one always comes from defining the problem there's quite a lot of problems that were mentioned before but what is the one that we can feel really passionate about what is the one problem that we feel like we really want to tackle and it can be something out of the box for example um, how do we create a city that focuses on wellness or how do we create a city that focuses on better quality of living. And what does that mean? What are some of the data points? Um, and then ask those questions first and then do some research. Now, the research part is really fun because we actually get to dive in deeper and understanding what is the actual problem at hand and how do we create a possible solution? When we're thinking about the possible solutions, this is the fun part. Share your ideas amongst peers, amongst your kids, amongst us, and be able to see what has been thought of and what hasn't. Um, I know kids are the best at creating things that we've never thought about. Um, and that's the best part, right? Being able to have them be passionate about thinking of solutions that we would never think about. Now, the next one is to start designing the solution. How is it interlinked? How is it intertwined? The really good example that we saw was from the football. We never would imagine the football actually starts from a tree and it's built and it's coming from third world country, right? It's coming from a rubber tree and that rubber tree is going through a process which someone has to actually bring in and someone has to bring into the factory and understand how to process that and how to create that. So when they said the world actually has um, this interlink, it's true. Uh, a soccer ball would actually travel quite a lot of distance before it gets to the field. Now, those are all things we can think about and all, and all the things that we can um, also help facilitate when we think about building a city. What are the interlinks? Now, I understand this is more of a, a macro concept and how we're going to start kind of narrowing it down to the micro is when we actually start building one of the buildings in the city. And what we can do is actually start smaller. So when we think about um, a, a micro section, let's think about an early, uh, easy, easy example. Let's say the grocery store. Right now we have a different scenario, a pandemic going on, and maybe not everyone can get to the grocery store. Maybe it's not that easy or simple. What are some ways we can redesign a grocery store? What the concept is like? Um, what if everyone had a grocery store in their backyard? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> so we can ask these kids these questions and then we can ask them uh, more about schooling systems. We had a few months where everyone had to homeschool essentially and that felt very different for everyone but it was also a good challenge. And what, what was it like and how, what were the pros and what were the cons? How can we construct something even more fun or educational or engaging? Um, of course, we looked at transportation for airports, train stations. How can we improve those? Since we cannot fly anymore, what's the next possible way to travel? Um, of course, also when we're looking at safety and health, how do we reinvent the whole idea of a doctor's office? Not a lot of kids like the doctor's office. If they were to reinvent that building and that system, what would it look like? What would it feel like? Um, that though, those are all really good questions. Now, what we want to do now is to actually give you guys a little bit of time to communicate with us and to chat with us about this one concept, the micro concept, which is pick one building within a city that you would like to work on 
first? What is the one building that you would like to work on first? Would it be your own home? Would you like to work on that? Would you like to work on a grocery store? Would you like to work on the school? What would you like to work on? And please go ahead and share that amongst us as well. And you can go ahead and write it down on a piece of paper first. And we're gonna ask some open-ended questions about this particular building. For example, its function, how to improve. What are some ways we can make it a lot more fun or engaging and how do we improve the system? So we're gonna go ahead and take one minute to kind of write down what building we would like to start off first on a micro concept and then how it ties together on a macro concept for a city. Okay, go ahead guys. We're gonna have some time for you guys now. And you guys- yes. Could you remind awesome. us what the difference between macro versus micro concept is again? Oh yes, good one. So a macro idea is the bigger picture, right? And the bigger picture means how is everything interlinked? How is everything connected? And the micro concept is the small detail within that picture. So for our example, it's the building that we're gonna be focusing on first. And I see a lot of people are thinking about school first and I absolutely love that. So if we're thinking about school, we're gonna first have this concept of what a school looks like and feels like. Right now it feels like lots of kids in one classroom, um, at tight space, everyone's kind of crowded together and probably one or two facilitators um, the overall layout is lots of boxes everywhere. Now, that's the regular concept. How do we open that up, right? How do we open that up is the first question. How would you design a school so that it is more fun and engaging and more lively? Is it going to be more like nature? Or is your school basically nature? You just build a very large garden, and that is part of your school. So let's think about that first. We're going to write down what building or what area we would like to work on. I see some answers here, which is schools, and I see some, which is parks. That's really great. <laughs> I love it, we're all in the education. <laughs> Everyone's like, I wanna do, this. <laughs> that's awesome. Ooh, beautiful, use homeschool and use the world as our school. That's, that's beautiful. If that's the case, how would your home be designed, right? It would be, would it be designed a little bit differently? What are some elements into it? So we're just gonna write down some elements. So first we're gonna write down what we're gonna be thinking about, which is the school for some of us or the park or our own home and how we're gonna turn it into a school. Next, we're gonna list out some ideas on the right-hand side and some adjectives to go along. What does it feel like? How, how would you like this building to Symbolize. What would it like? To, what would you like it to symbolize? How would it look like? Uh, give yourselves a couple of minutes to write down some ideas and to draw it out. We're going to do this together, and some of us will be able to share as well. Perfect. So I will play a little bit of background music for you guys as we're getting ready for this. Go ahead, spend two minutes. If we're working on the school, how do we improve it?
All right, guys, 30 more seconds. Just write down some more ideas. Draw a little bit of something. And also, if you're working on a school system, what grades are you guys working on? Or is it overall? That's also something I'm very curious about. If you guys are working on something else like the park or the post office or transportation system, also let us know your thoughts. We would love to know. All right. 10 more seconds. And if anyone would like to share, you can go ahead and press raise your hand or just let us know. We can move you over to the panel side. You can share your ideas with us real quick. So if anyone's interested in opening up their microphones and video, we are more than happy to have you. All right, so I will share real quick and then we'll have uh, Lindsay share her idea real quick and then we can open it up to our attendees as well, okay? So since everyone listed out school, I think that's a great one too. I'm very passionate about the school system as well. Now, um, what I drew first is this, uh, here, let me see if I can get it uh, to show up here. Okay. Okay, I'm like a virtual, okay, hold on one second. This is a white piece of paper. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna picture it for you guys. So what I drew is a circle, and within that circle, there's five different boxes. Now, what I wrote down for some of the words that I wanna focus on is basically theme project learning. And I don't want it to separate it through grade. I want it to be based on uh, a particular theme that they would work on for a couple of months. Let's say we're working on um, a particular theme around uh, cars and the mechanics and engineering and a little bit of physics. Now, within that area, there's different parts so that you can be learning about from the basics to the more complicated, but it's gonna be more project-based. So everyone's gonna actually be putting something together and you can see like a big screen where like, oh, this is, this is gonna be the big, big um, uh, theme of the, of the month and little sections will start to show up. And within those sections, it'll say what parts can we accomplish together and what parts still needs to be thought about or designed. And everyone can kind of think about which areas they would like to do and they can talk amongst each other and understand, all right, maybe I wanna start off with understanding the combustion of the engine. Maybe I wanna start off with understanding uh, rubber and how tires are made and change that. And everyone has the ability to kind of choose and from there, learn the concepts first of how to do it, then design together, talk, it, talk about it with fellow students and actually put those things together. So you can have like four or five different car projects coming together instead of everyone kind of separated and doing different things and se separated through, um, you know, grades and everything like that. That's how I envision it, a big circle. And within that circle, compartments where everything's being project-based and grades will not be separated. Um, so that's some of my ideas. And of course, nature in the middle, I put, is gonna be super important to make sure everything they're doing is in touch with nature, technology and nature as well. So that's what I drew and that's some of the things that I wrote down as to what I would like to be working on. Now, go ahead, Lindsay, I would love to hear some of your thoughts. Let me stop sharing. Yeah, right so I think like with mine, I'll just briefly show it, is that it's definitely very much like a sketch doodle. But the thing I just thought about was like creating a school of free play that has like kind of a, a really fun interaction that even just going from one room to the next room, you know, mm. you, you have like this journey. So I think about this like kind of cylinder, this type of cylinder mm. with a massive ramp that's very accessible. So instead of stairs going up and down, you can, you know, go in, it's a spiral. So it, turn, it creates a lot of opportunity for um, the spiral going down to turn into some sort of gallery setting that maybe there can be uh, like bulletin boards of students' projects, or maybe that's where the lockers are, but there's a lot of like interaction. But also the mm. way I designed it was to have like this massive like glass case around it. So in oh, case that you're in a city like, like I'm in Stockholm, which is yeah. fairly cold and very rain, rainy, not so much on mm. the snow, but there's a lot of rain. 
And mm -hmm. actually in Gothenburg, where I used to live in Sweden, it's a very rainy city. So they even have designated rain playgrounds. So that way, oh. when it rains most of the year, especially during the winter, you have a space that you can still play outside. So it encourages you to have puddles of water. So I just think about trying to incorporate a lot of natural light. So mm -hmm. no matter what the weather is, you can still observe, you know, through the lens of this glass case, like kind of like a, a massive window around the school. And mm -hmm. I also think about that actually in the inside of the glass or inside the spiral, like kind of like the cylinder school shape is a gathering space. So think of it as like a, a community square that everybody can gather in. Or if you're in a classroom, you can always view inside this communal space. So it's like a way to share announcements or share projects or see what other kids are doing in, mm. in school, but it's also an opportunity to do an auditorium. So it makes sharing like kind of cross, um, cross cur curricular. So it could also be that maybe you can see what science class is up to, or you can see what first grade or kindergarten is up to. So it yes. kind of like brings this a lot more intersection of different um, grade groups. So that's like where I was starting to focus because you know, being based in, um, especially in, in Sweden and traveling throughout Europe, I've noticed that there's a lot of like usual community squares sometimes mm -hmm. and which, you know, it's like a space where you can have cafes or it's like a really nice place that has art pieces or fountains. So I just thought about trying to bring that into the school, that having more mm. community spaces intentionally designed in the learning experience. That's awesome. That's, that's really beautiful. I love, I love that. So, you know, putting some of these ideas together, that already sounds like a school I would like to send my kids to. So I would love to hear, I would love to hear some of our attendees, uh, Jackie, I would love to hear some of your thoughts. And of course, uh, Maria with um, your, some of your thoughts and Tiffany with your park, maybe your park would be in the center of, of, of this school, you know, the community idea, I think is fantastic being able to meet at parks is a community thing as well. So if you guys would love to share, please let us know. We can pull you over to the panelists um, and give you guys some time. Uh, if not, we can move on to the next section, which is to understand more about sustainable development goals that's created by United Nations and what we're doing here at Strawby as well. All right. If you guys know um, how to do that, just raise your hand. There's a button here that says raise your hand, or you can just type in the chat box. We would love to know more about your thoughts and what you guys came up with. Um, let me read one out loud. My idea is more theoretical instead of shape and design. Nice. Would you like to share a little bit more about your ideas? Theoretical instead of shape and design. Awesome. Cool. Lindsay, do you think we should pull them over? So perfect. You can over to the panelist side let's open up your mic and give you some time to share hello can you hear me <clears throat> yes hello welcome hi so my idea i don't have any idea for buildings but it's like to have nature and lots of space for movement with open classrooms and have a safe environment where kids can follow their passions and with mm -hmm. access to the materials, resources, and mentors. Awesome. So the kids will be able to learn at their own pace, sharing resources, multi-age learning so that people can learn what they're interested in as opposed to what's dictated by a certain grade. Awesome. And hands-on learning through projects and wide access to like books and computers and building materials or sort of like strawbies and electronics. Awesome. It sounds like we all have somewhat of the same concept, which is definitely no separate by grades, have them be able to intertwine with each other um, and intermingle. And of course, nature, super, super important part. Um, oh, nice. Jackie, I like, I like detailed. I'm going to add solar panels. Oh, lots of sunlight. I 100% agree. And big fun recycling bins. <laughs> nice. Basketball, soccer nets built in. Nice. Um, big playground. Okay. Very good. Very good. Love it. I love it. So I, I like that. <laughs> this is really awesome. We're all passionate about education and we all think similar in a sense. Um, we all have the same general directions. That's beautiful. Is there uh, anyone who would like to share with us real quick? Tiffany, would you like to share as well? You had, I think. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Awesome. Okay. Um, so my playground, I was thinking of uh, it being, um, well, the park, but a playground being more of the center of the, in the community mm -hmm. and um, making it more interactive with um, exploratory hands-on um activities you know like digging for things and stuff like mm -hmm. that and also um having movable parts so that um children can invent and design with the actual structures having mm -hmm. more sensory based um play water-based play even having um a community garden um you know with the farmer's market and things like that kind of a central area where you can kind of you know involve the community even in um composting and recycling and, and different things like that nice awesome i really love this this we should all just start a school together guys yeah i, I think we have I the, the is... next cohort for creating a wonderful <laughs> school somewhere oh man this is awesome uh awesome and maria yes you also have some more thoughts i would love to have you share as well um are you okay to share with us some of your thoughts that you typed out here yes okay perfect hello um, I also wrote down words, not shapes, but uh, I think my words fit, uh, fit very well with the community square mm. because I thought of a group of students uh, discussing together their problems, making decisions together, a school full of colors and with a big garden that we all together take care of. Um, a big playground um, and everything is accessible to all. Uh, basic, that was my dream school. Awesome, 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 awesome. I love that. The community square, um, same with yes. Lindsay's idea as well. I think that's a really big part. Uh, a school should definitely have an area where they can all gather, relax, um, feel like they're being rejuvenated. And that's always associated with gardens. I know each of us have gardens in there as well. And that's super important. Um, I definitely have a small little garden in my patio and it is very therapeutical. You can get lots of creative, creative ideas. And when, every time you get in touch with nature, it does feel amazing. Awesome. Thank you guys again for, for sharing. We have, uh, I guess, one more minute if Jackie would like to jump in um, and share with us as well. We would love to hear some of your thoughts. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Okay, no problems, Jackie. I, I, uh, awesome. So we have a couple more minutes. Uh, I'm just going to go over some more materials with you guys, and then we will actually hand it over to Lindsay, and we'll start the building process, which is going to be super fun. So I'm going to go back and share this. Now, the sustainable goals, um, there's actually 17 of them, but here at Strawbies, we focus on uh, these right now. Now, of course, the, the first one, quality education is what we all touched upon, right? And that's something that we first thought about, quality education. How do we have a system where they can all gather together, where they're not separated by grades, where they have themes, where they have this ability to explore, um, have censorship, and just be able to enjoy themselves, right? Um, and within that, we can actually build upon all of this, which is Within the school system, how do we generate clean water? And how is it going to work with affordable energy? Is it gonna be possible with only sun solar systems or do we need something else? And as we were thinking about these schools, we already touched upon the infrastructure and innovation. Um, Lindsay had a fantastic idea of you know, a spiral system where they had a journey to the next class, which is really awesome. And being ha having that enclosed in a, in a space that's gonna have you know, that light shining through as well. Um, and within that, we can see how we're all thinking about this. So that's absolutely beautiful. And um, this is something that I would love for all of us to continue exploring and for us to build upon these ideas and share it with our kids as well. Great. So I know we have um, now, Lindsay is going to bring us along and help 
share some of what she's been doing. Uh, this urban planning class is absolutely amazing. I would love for her to share a little bit about that and how she was able to start getting these kids to think about the city that they're going to build, um, the macro layout, and actually build something with us. So go ahead, Lindsay. Yeah, so this is pretty much an overview of uh, what was taught. So about a few weeks ago, I was teaching a, a summer camp course on urban planning, which is basically what we're doing now. We just renamed it city, city building with a sustainable development goals. So roughly what James like walked us through was trying to really think on the micro and then expanding slowly on the macro level. And um, of course, like what I like was giving some of the students is like a creative prompt. And of course, this is over Zoom. So this was over distance learning experiences on Zoom. And um, a lot of us are already thinking on the micro level because of our local community. So I, I felt like even more, more than ever, a lot of students were already thinking about their surrounding and what is already in their neighborhood, um, really zooming in. So this is like an example of a map that we created. It's kind of like an overview of what we wanted. So even if we didn't have all the, the full layout of the city, like particularly all the micro, the micro needs of like hospitals and schools, we, this was just a map that kind of was a create a landscape. So thinking mm -hmm. on the landscape of where is your city? Is your city, and of course your city could be, you know, locally, like you, know, you could be based in New York City. So maybe you think that you are a more urban setting. Some students were based in a more rural area. Um, for me, I'm in a mix of like rural and I have access to a major city where I'm at. So, you know, the divide between having the very urban setting with a lot of buildings placed on top of each other and then a rural and a more rural like like farming community is pretty easily accessible from the major city of Stockholm. So that's like what I was uh, trying to show in the map that, you know, kids were trying to think of like the grand scale without getting too detailed, especially because the city might have a lot of elements. So, you know, breaking it down, thinking about mountains, if there's a bridge, if there's like farming, if there's like an ocean, and then kind of creating a key. So the key was kind of mixed where it could be like, where is my home in relation to all of this? And it also allowed them to think about, well, maybe I can start to expand or redesign the city. So maybe I want easier access to forest because maybe it takes me two hours to go to the beach or it takes me, you know, maybe my commute is a little too long going into the city living from my neighborhood. So I had students basically draw a map of the local community. So then on the next slide, you can see that there's a few examples of student projects. So, you know, James, if you show the next slide. I think you, uh, okay. Well, that's okay. Yeah, so the, on, the, on this slide, you can see that there's like a major overview. So basically translating the design of that map from the landscape and thinking about roughly where the urban setting is and the rural farm, where's the body of water then students were able to actually just even start by laying down colorful pieces of paper instead first. So taking green sheets of paper. But of course, some students, unfortunately, I can't show all of the cities because on Zoom, it can be very limiting. And I also didn't want to show homes, too much detail of a personal home. So we're going to use my example here. But the idea is that some students were just trying to find like green, green pieces of fabric, like maybe a blanket that they thought looked like grass that could be really nice for a landscape or cardboard, you know, cereal boxes, or even finding bottles. So like thinking about finding plastic bottles or shampoo bottles that are tossed away. Although I had one student that was taking shampoo bottles that were full of shampoo and using those as buildings with strawberries. So with their parents' permission, that's how they were starting to build, <laughs> inconveniencing a shower time sometimes, but, you know, turning it into a bu building. So then, um, in the next slide, there's like a, a few examples of student maps. So James, you can show the next slide. So a few examples of student buildings. So again, that they were starting to think about, you know, what is in, what is like in their lifestyle and what is in their relation. So a bridge, cafe, and then starting to really expand on the map. So although we started with building the maps right away, of course, some students actually ended up redesigning their map. So they were able to actually add on, or they even started to you know, recreate an extension of the map 
as we started to implement new ideas for sustainability. So, and then on the next slide, I'll show you a few bits of like strawby projects that were created. So some students were creating playgrounds, swings, they were making wind turbines. So they were trying to use like the motion and mechanical movement of strawbies to implement into, you know, add more kinetic, add a more kinetic um, process to their, to their city structures. So like, you know, when Jackie was saying that she wants to make solar panels, maybe making a solar panel that has a mechanical movement to follow the sun. So maybe from east to west or north to south, depending on where you are in the world. So you can even think about how to design um, some of your parts of your city on the micro level that works throughout um, certain, certain times of the year or that's a very seasonal change. So now what I'm gonna show you is a brief video and I'm gonna actually show the link also. So we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise where we're gonna create a stacking tower. So basically we're gonna be using a cube. So we're gonna be making a cube and then stacking the, and connecting the cubes together. So we have a two minute video. And then maybe James, you can lower the music a little bit. So that way it's not too distracting. So a really important thing to note with strawbies is that it's really important to try and bend the legs. So some of you have never used strawbies before or maybe have used strawbies. Some tips and tricks of building with strawbies is when you want to create uh, like cubes or like a geometric shape and you might want to have like a more sharper corner. So pre-bending the legs ahead of time is probably the best way to get started when you're creating especially cube because otherwise you might, you might start to get this bowing of the straws on the outside. So the idea is that you want to like pre-bend the strawbies and then they should fit together and then you shouldn't have so much problems because sometimes with students you also might find that when they're building with the strawbies that it might the leg might slip out of the straw and it could be because it's just slipping out. So I'm just going to post the same video. So even after the webinar, if you want to go through the process of learning how to build the stacking tower, here's the YouTube link in the video that you can find the instructions. you can create a shape that basically competes this, the, the top of the tower. So kind of like a small pyramid shape. So again, what's interesting to note is that, you know, there's actually different sizes of straws that you can create. So, you know, if you have like a, a steam school kit, for example, or like a crazy scientist kit, you'll find that a lot of the straws are full length. But of course, like we like to create kind of a system where you can cut them in half. So you can have half length straws, full length straws. So a full length straw that usually comes in the kit is 24 centimeters long. So you can actually, with the 24 centimeter full length straws, you can make really large towers. So suddenly you can make massive skyscrapers, but you can also cut the straws into like a set of like 12 centimeters and you can have a much smaller building. So when you transform these like stacking towers into buildings, you can like place it on top of cardboard. You can, you can, uh, you can actually put like a small cube in front of um, the doorway. So then suddenly it becomes a hall. And then it becomes kind of like a wireframe of your structure. So, you know, adding like small elements like I, on my school here, which is a little bit more traditional than I'd like it to be. Um, this school example is more of like, it has a clock tower. It has like kind of the rooms. It has like an one entrance point. So, and it even has like paper trees around it. But I think if I were to change it, I think I would, you know, try to make a much more larger building that's like very large scale with like a small center inside of it that's more communal. Of course, making the ramp that curls around might be a little bit of a challenge, but I think that's where I might wanna transform the cube into something more like a prism. So something that could be like a diamond prism shape. But of course, like this, uh, this uh, stacking tower is kind of a nice way to get started. 
So this is how you can create uh, some basic buildings. So you can make really tall skyscrapers and maybe make and even connect them to a big sheet of cardboard so they don't flop over. That's also how cardboard can be very useful. So poking holes into the cardboard and poking strawbies through the cardboard to secure it in place will really help with making really large structures. So, you know, you could actually build a very large city that takes over a whole room depending on what size straws that you use. So that's like kind of the basics of how to build with strawbies. So I definitely want to give everyone a little bit of time to, you know, build a tower. So I think James, let's play the video once more. And I also shared the, the link to the video in the chat as well. So that way you can watch it separately if you need to and pause it, but I'll also play it in the Zoom. James for sharing it one more time. So while you're building, I want to show like what the landscape looked like before we started building the, the towers, the, the buildings and the farms on top. So again, you can find colorful paper. Um, any paper is fine, construction paper, printer paper, cardboard, fabric, and this and just kind of laying out. So in a way, you're literally taking the map that you drew if you with students. Of course, you can just focus on the single building. So I think today we're going to be focusing more on a single building, but you can start to think about maybe what is the landscape around it look like. So, you know, using green paper or black paper, or you can have it purple because maybe purple is a very pleasant color. So if you can change the color of grass, maybe that is a possibility as well, or creating something that maybe looks like water. So maybe having a blue asphalt playground could be really nice and very pleasant to look at. So starting to kind of think on that scale. And then we can, okay. and then so in the video, you see that where is like orange straws. So the size of those orange straws that we cut are basically about eight centimeters long. So those were the, that was the uh, eight centimeter straws that we made from orange. So we kind of created a color coding system where we had, you know, eight centimeters for the orange straws. But, um, and if I show you with the blue straws here, which is like the 24 centimeter, and then we made a system where we cut pink straws, and then those were about 12 centimeters. 
So you can think about you know, pre-cutting a set of straws and creating a, a construction system. But of course you can pre-build a little bit or even use the straws as is and make really large structural buildings. So this is mine. This is the part of the school that is made out of the 12 centimeters. So it's actually pretty tall. It's almost like for me sitting down from the desk, it's actually almost as tall as me at the desk size. So just to think about scale on the macro level and micro level, if you want really tall skyscrapers or very small, very tiny little buildings. Ah, I see there's a good question. So if using strawberries is for multiple groups, or if you're using strawberries for multiple groups, what type of cleaning is recommended between groups? So you can use soap and water. I would not recommend dishwashing because I know that some individuals like to dishwash Legos, which the plastic can handle kind of the wear and tear, especially from the water and the heat. But I, I don't think the straws and the plastic uh, connectors would do too well in that extreme amount of heat. So you can just use soapy water, probably something that's not too much film and foam, like that has a lot of foam. So there are some soaps that have a lot of, uh, like it can build up a lot of suds. So I'd probably even recommend like really having a light amount of soap in there so it doesn't get caught inside and dry inside. So you can just use soapy water. But of course, try not to use hot water. Use like warm, warm water if possible. Good question. So very interesting. I feel like this, uh, this, this part one of this planar went by so fast because we have about five minutes left. How are you doing, James? There you go. Perfect. So uh, I'm starting to build as well. And I apologize. I have a virtual screen now. So my structure starts to disappear. Uh, but I wanted to actually build something where it would able it was able to transform. So as you can kind of see, it's able to do transform. This is the base of it. And what we're going to do is building upwards from there. Um, but I really appreciate that video. I think it's really good to be able to see how it's done, put together. Um, it's a very, very um, helpful to visualize that. And while building, I'm also thinking about what you mentioned, which is the environment around now. So what does the environment look like, the green area, and how is that going to affect the building? And I think that's also as well. Awesome. And I would love to see kind of more of what everyone else is building and what everyone else's thoughts are about um, this particular session. I know it went back super fast. We only have a couple more minutes left, but we'll love for some feedback and we'd love to hear more from you guys as well. would like to share you know you can tell us in the chat or you can tell us via mic how's your building process or you know if you're really new to strawberries if there's any questions you have as well about it awesome. i think one tip that i think about when i first use strawberries is really bending the legs of the strawberries yeah, like tip. if i want to create corners instead of starting to build a cube like this. So like sliding the straw on the leg and then trying to bend it like that. Yeah. It's t it tends to make the cube kind of warped and, you know, kind of more of a bubble. Sometimes it makes it a little too round. So of course it's a big difference when you pre bend all the legs. Because then I can start to build a corner. So sometimes with like if you have multiple students, although you know maybe maybe there's some limitations, so you might have a lot more independent building, especially with our um, or like with small groups, you can always have someone cut the straws. If you have like a set that has the full length straws and somebody that's pre-building all the connectors, so you can have kind of like a you know assignment of builders, the connector builders, the straw builders. Awesome. To make some nice corners. Nice. That is quite beautiful. Awesome. So I guess we have some free build time now. Um, and beforehand, we can also mention, Lindsay, next week, 
what are the topics that we'll be discussing. <laughs> so next week we're going to be continuing to build. So we're going to be prototyping. So awesome. you know, if you don't have a chance to finish the, the stacking tower today, we'll continue to work on it. And also like some tips and tricks on how to improve it or perhaps even start to think beyond a cube, think outside the box actually, and think yeah. a little bit about other dynamic shapes that you can create or even something like ramps. Because uh, we also have like a, a marble run activity that we use uh, for roller coasters that could be really nice ramps. So if you want something that maybe is a ball that represents a person, it could be very interesting to introduce that. But we'll be doing some prototyping and hopefully we can bring Eric in next time. Awesome. Awesome. So it was a pleasure to be with you guys today. Uh, I look forward to our next session and have an amazing week. And it's a good comment. I see, uh, yeah, beware. There's a warning about letting younger students cut the straws. Of course, you can always pre cut your own straws ahead of time. If you have a steam school kit, for example, that's the full length. So always think about that as well. But thank you everyone for joining us. So we hope to see you here next time. Same time, next Wednesday, every Wednesday in August. Thank you everyone. Keep building. <laughs>